Hi, Scott here from Powell and I'm in the Ayrshire Hub and I'm recording a presentation on doubling your productivity. So I'm recording a video, this was initially meant to be a lunch and learn session where we would all meet up and get some lunch and I'd go over this presentation but a few people can't make it and I want everybody to see this so I'm going to record a video then it's nice and easy for timekeeping. This is about productivity so it's quite relevant that I'm recording a video, you can watch it in your own time when suits you rather than coming into the hub and seeing a presentation. So I hope everybody gets a lot out of this, I'm going to guarantee for the average person, I'll be able to double your current productivity levels. So I've got 11 or 12 different tips and hacks where we can really, really escalate how productive you are in a day. Time management skills are going to increase and you're going to be able to get a lot more out of your time and it's going to be a lot more focused. So I'll share this with everybody and maybe people in the Greater Entrepreneurial Spark community so that everybody can see it. Because it's a, a video run, a live presentation, ask any questions underneath. I'm going to speak as fast as I can, so please keep up with me, just so that it's not too long a video for you guys, because we've got short attention spans, and on the topic of productivity, we all have jobs to be getting on with and businesses to build. But I guarantee if you invest half an hour of your time with me, and if you're getting your productivity doubled from next week onwards, then that is a great, great way to spend your time. So listening to this for half an hour is definitely going to get you hundreds of hours back if you implement these tips over the space of your business career. On that note about implementation, I'm going to start with a little story. And it comes from the car manufacturing processes, and I believe it was the 60s. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing some stuff for brevity here. And at one point in time, the, the Japanese were leading the, the way on car manufacturers, and the Americans were lagging behind. And it pretty much amazed the Americans how, how did Japan beat the Americans? How did they beat Ford, who were known for the big juggernauts of making cars? Uh, but the manufacturing techniques of the guys over in, um, over in Japan, there was Edward Demons that left America and went and implemented a lot of these over there. So Japan had loads of cool things, Kanban, Kaizen, just in time, all these lean manufacturing processes focused on productivity that were the total opposite of what the Americans were doing. So the Japanese invited the Americans over. And as the story goes, the Japanese walked through the whole of the factory with the Americans, showed them all the secrets, showed them all the little manufacturing stuff, there's a productivity tip, pretty much shared with 100% transparency everything they were doing. And at the end of it, the Americans said, listen, thank you very much, but I don't, we don't understand. Why would you invite us here? Why would you share all your secrets? And why would you give us all your business plan and everything that makes you better than us and competitively more advantageous than us? We don't understand why you would share this knowledge. And the story goes that the Japanese had a little laugh between themselves and one just came forward and says, we're happy to share this information with me, with you, because we know you won't implement it. So that is quite a, an analogous story to this. They're happy to give, the Japanese were happy to give the Americans the information because they knew the Americans would not implement it. We're talking about things like having massive industries and stockpile of parts where the Japanese didn't have any. They ordered one in when one got used. The Americans did the opposite and had massive industries and massive warehouses. But they knew, the Japanese guys knew, that the Americans would continue to be American. They would not implement these secrets. And it did take the Americans a, a good couple of decades to catch up with the Japanese, if indeed they even have. Not my industry, and I'm paraphrasing the story, but that is really relevant to any talks you go to. The people, whatever they're talking about, could be accountancy, business, leadership, management, they will give you the secrets. It's certainly fitness as well. You can, there, there's no mystical thing for fitness or getting fit or eat healthy. The information is freely available there on the internet. You could get a, a diet plan and a fitness plan within an hour, they would totally transform your life. The information is there, it's been given to you online by hundreds if not thousands of people for free. But nobody implements it and that's what I want to start with this story and tell you guys. Your productivity will double if you implement the little tips that I'm giving you here. It might be against, some you might not want to implement, some might not suit you, but the story of the Japanese and the Americans, they laughed at the Americans because they knew there's the secrets, there's how to be competitive to make more money and be more successful, 
but the, the, the Americans did not implement it. And it's the same with this. There's so many business things I go to, especially in the property industry, the people give away their secrets, people pay thousands of pounds to go on courses, they get the secrets, and every single month on my mastermind programs, we go back and the same people have not implemented anything. They ignore the advice that they've been given. So, if you're spending time watching this, you need to get something out of it. I'm going to rattle through some of these tips as best, as quickly as I can, and give you as much knowledge as I can. Any follow-up questions, then fire them uh, in the comments below of wherever you're seeing this video. So story over, we're going on to tip number one, and that's the Pomodoro method. And I think I've mentioned this before in Entrepreneurial Spark, simply breaking your time into chunks. Pomodoro comes from the wee Pomodoro tomato timers you get, you set it for however long you're cooking for, you can get apps on your phone, so you can get the exact same thing on your phone. And the principle of Promodoro is you work for 25 minutes uninterrupted, phones off, emails off, everything off on the one task that you want to do. And once you've done that, your alarm will go off and you get five minutes break to do what you want. You repeat four times, which means you've worked for a couple hours, then you take 30 minutes off. So 25 minutes hard, uninterrupted, focused work, and then you have a wee five minute break for a cup of tea or a pee or whatever. Now, that sounds very simple. The simplicity of it is the, the genius and obviously the downfall of it as well because I, I suggest to most people try to start this, they're going to really struggle with this. The first time I tried to work 25 minutes uninterrupted, uh, I was getting up, I was doing this, I was checking social media, I was answering phones. You need to get yourself somewhere where you won't be interrupted. The Pomodoro method, and again, for this, doubling your productivity, this is going to probably get your productivity up by 25% alone. So you're increasing it by a quarter alone with this tip. Don't spend time jumping between tasks. Don't get interrupted. Be somewhere like this uh, office training room here. Spend 25 minutes on really, really focused on a task and I guarantee your productivity will skyrocket. Do not underestimate how hard this is going to be to start off. You're going to want to do different things. The minds, this day and age is active, it's running, it's jumping to various tasks. People want your time, people want a piece of you, people do have deadlines. Forget about it, break your tasks into 25 minute chunks, five minutes off and use the Pomodoro method. Google it for more information, get apps, um, or message me and I'll send you a link to the apps I use. This is gonna get 25% onto your productivity. Trust me, it's the simplest and the greatest method for this. The next one I'm gonna speak of, maybe 10% on your time, certainly 10% for me, is get any people that are meeting you to come to you. So there's a thing in the UK, um, it annoys me, I, I love timekeeping, it's a, a thing I, value highly that most people I meet are late. People just don't turn up in time. People, to me, it's disrespectful. Um, if you're on time, you're five minutes late. It was an old motto going back to my military days. You just, if you're in time, you're late. You're five minutes late. You want to be there nice and early. And the majority of the people I meet are always late. So if I know people are always late and I'm going to travel to them, I, like, I value timekeeping, so I'm going to be there. So I, by the time I start traveling to them, I need to take into consideration the traveling time. My time to get there early in case they're on in time because it's important to me. The time standing about like a mug waiting and they're going to be late, which is generally a minimum of five minutes, but it can be half an hour. Ah, oh, traffic. Ah, oh, the traffic. Well, you didn't realize there was traffic in the road. You didn't plan ahead. People just don't really value timekeeping in this country, in my opinion. So not everybody is like that, but if you think a half an hour journey, well, it's a half hour journey for a meeting, your half an hour actually sitting in the car to get there is doubled very, very easily because you're going to start packing up, doing your stuff, shutting down your laptop, getting ready to go. It's going to be five, ten minutes you get to your car. You travel there. You're going to get there ten minutes early anyway to make sure you're in time. You get there in case you get lost because you're planning ahead just in case there is traffic. So you're probably going to get to your meeting ten minutes early out of decency, and then you're going to be waiting for the other 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the end for them being late. So your half an hour traveling time for that meeting easily turns into an hour, and people underestimate this all the time. So if you can get people to come to you, as we speak, I'm in Dundonald, the East Park hub, and I, despite of being in the middle of nowhere, I try my hardest to get every single meeting to come to me. So it means that the two different sides, if I need to get to Glasgow, which could be an hour across the way, but if I need to go somewhere that's a 20 minute drive, I know it's 40 minutes out my time to get there. 
maybe be 20 minutes back then and set up the computer. So uh, that 20 minute drive is definitely an hour and a half round trip, realistically. I can save that by getting people to come here because if they're late, I don't care, I'm sitting working, I'm on the phone, I'm doing stuff. I am using my time uh, wisely. Now, I have a lot of meetings, so I might have five or six a week. I'm in property, so more, not most of them, but a lot of the meetings I need to physically go and see the people, so I don't get a choice to not have meetings at properties because I need to go and see them, I need to evaluate them, I need to price them up, I need to do viewings with people that I'm meeting. So there's very, 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 the majority of the time I might need to go somewhere, but in the exceptions where I don't, which I'd say is less than half, but for me that's still maybe four or five meetings a week, I get people to come here. Now, that's not been selfish, but people generally want the, the path of least resistance. Yeah, you'll meet you come here, come to me. And people will always want you to come to them, so why would you not be selfish with your time? You need to protect it, it's your business, it's your livelihood, it's your income, so you need to push and be assertive to get people to come to you. Because most people, actually, if they work for certain organisations, bigger organisations, they want a day trip out of the office, they don't want you to come to them because they want to travel on time. And also some people link um, meetings with others, so they'll be travelling about. So they, a lot of people, especially if they're selling you services, don't mind that you are. Uh, they need to come to you. Most people will probably enjoy it. But you need to be selfish with your time, and you can easily cut, I'd cut 10% of my um, wasted time off by um, getting people to come to me at Dundonald. You can be nice about it. Listen, tell you what, I'm really busy, I have a few calls, but if you can manage to come to me, I'll get some nice cake and I'll get you a nice wee coffee, I'll get nice wee coffee pods, whatever, I'll get a nice cake in. And you can reward them, you can make it fun, so you don't need to be arsy about it. So great tip is get people to come to you for your meetings. Very simply, you're wasting five, 10 minutes at the very least, because most people will be late for meetings, in my experience. So moving on to tip number three, and this is scrapping to-do lists. Rather than having a to-do list, we want to work from calendar entries. So let me explain. Most people have, there's loads of apps, there's stuff on your computer, there's stuff attached to Gmail. There's so many, there's, there's hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands different to-do apps and ways of recording stuff. There's complicated grid matrices, important, urgent, urgent, not important. All these are nonsense. You simply just need to break your jobs into chunks and put them in your diary. So in my, somebody once said, white space in your diary is the devil. You'll end up wasting your time. People will block shit and that's, that's nonsense. It's nothing to do with you making money. So white, that white noise in your diary is a devil. Fill it up with your tasks. I'll give you an example. So my to-do list is on Asana, which is a project management software package free, by the way asana.com, work, check it out, it's amazing. You can allocate tasks to your team members, but my day is broken down, not by to-do lists, I have a to-do list in Asana, but every single one of those to-do tasks has a date attached to it. So I know for today, yesterday, I put in last night, I'm gonna spend half an hour, 40 minutes making this video. So I've put in an hour that I'm gonna be making this video. That means my time is for a specific time slot that I'm doing now, so I didn't just put it in a task list, because otherwise the phones would have went, I would have other tasks, my time is blocked out for that. I have some investment proposals to do, which is gonna take me two hours, so I'm gonna break that into 30 minute chunks, do two today, one before, one after, two tomorrow, and you fill up your diary like so. If you've got a to-do list and you've got 10 tasks on it, without any times attached to it, then you, don't, you can't estimate, and one of the problems we have as Business owners and new entrepreneurs is that we want to please our new clients. We want to get things done fast for them. So we often overpromise when it comes to the time that we can deliver what we're saying. So if I had a, an investment proposal to do for an overseas landlord, it's gonna take me four hours, for example. And if somebody, I've a millionaire guy from Hong Kong, he's what to spend, he's got to buy property, I'm gonna be keen and enthused and I'm gonna tell him I'm gonna have that done for tomorrow. And if I have a to-do list, I can shuffle that about, but actually there's no times attached to that, so it's one of our faults as humans is we underestimate the amount of time it takes to do stuff. So I'm telling him tomorrow, and then tomorrow is Thursday, and then he doesn't get it to, you know, it's gonna be Monday, Tuesday, realistically, when he gets that. Now I've promised him it, that's a bad first impression. If I know that we over underestimate the amount of time it takes to do tasks, that's eradicated by using the calendar method rather than to-do lists. So my investment proposal I'm gonna do, cool. 
So when I'm speaking to him, I say, I will get you that. Well, where can I get it? I want it as quick as you can. Cool. Let me check my uh, workload. And you know that you've got four, th four hours over the next four days. So you can tell him it's actually realistically going to be the end of next week before I can do that. Ah, well, you know, I'd like it sooner. Unfortunately, as a successful, busy business, we have existing clients that we need to service. And I do not want to tell you that you will get your 